Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I have another message for you which I feel could be valuable for each and every one of us in our relationships, particularly coming into Christmas time, um, getting to spend some time with loved ones. I hope that you are getting that opportunity. Uh, before I get into today's message and just doing a couple of shares, make sure that you are dropping me a comment. Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from and definitely play along at home. <clears throat> I'd love to hear your thoughts on what we're going to be talking about today. But yeah, I don't know where you are in the world, but right here in uh, Australia, I'm in Melbourne, had some family coming down for Christmas from Sydney, and we've actually just had, um, you know, a new wave of coronavirus um, happening in northern Sydney right now. So won't get to see um, a bunch of family that uh, was planning to. So um, hope that where you are in the world, um, hopefully you're getting to spend that time with your loved ones and uh, yeah, not kind of running into these last minute Christmas challenges um, with the year that has been 2020, right? <laughs> so um, my heart is with you guys if you are missing out on those connections. And if not, I'm really feeling like today's message is going to really empower us in order to uh, really have meaningful connections with our family, with our friends, with our loved ones over this Christmas period. Um, because one of the major things that I have a lot of different clients coming to me for is their experience of guilt, right? And not knowing, you know, feeling, taking on a whole lot of responsibility uh, for the people around them, um, you know, feeling um, guilty when their partner or friends or family uh, don't feel good or if they're angry or upset or disappointed, um, you know, taking responsibility for other people's emotions and feelings and uh, really falling into guilt. And today, what I'm going to be discussing with you guys is the difference between healthy guilt and unhealthy guilt. And there's a big, big difference. And it's really valuable to know the difference. And that's why today um, we are talking about the fact that I don't want anybody, don't let anybody, right, guilt you into neglecting yourself. Because this happens time and time again, and those of us who succumb to uh, guilt from external sources, oh, you know, this is a big one because we end up not even realizing that we're sacrificing what's healthy for us. We're neglecting what we actually need to be our highest, most, most healthy, most fulfilled selves. And we're doing it all um, in a way that actually enables those that we're, you know, well-intentioned about, you know, we really want them to feel good. We want them to be fulfilled. They, we want them to be connected and loving towards us. What we end up doing, although we might have best intentions behind that, um, those ways of being that create our guilt, unhealthy style, which I'll talk a bit more into in a moment, when we do that, it actually just serves to enable other people to not take responsibility for their own selves as well. All right. So and it starts this very downward cycle where those around us, we are training to um, blame us for the emotions that they're experiencing. And all that does is reinforce the guilt that we feel. And it's just that back and forth cycle. So I don't know if you've fallen into that before, right? Because all that does is now you're saying, yes, you're right. I am responsible for your emotions. I'm so sorry. Now I feel so guilty. I feel so terrible about me myself. Now I'm going to take in more responsibility for your feelings. And then that person expects that you have to operate in the ways that make them feel good uh, versus not feel good, right? And now all you're doing is creating um, kind of a victim in their own lives. They might feel like they're empowered um, because they've got you running around, you know, meeting their every need and walking on eggshells. But basically, they've given you all the power. And now you're taking on the responsibility to sacrifice yourself, neglect what's healthy for you so that you can manage and maintain this other person and emotions, but don't think it's all so selfless because the only time we engage in that unhealthy style of guilt, right, and take on all the responsibility of other people's emotions 
is basically because we're trying to control their perception of us because we are trying to get their love, their acceptance, their approval, rather than taking responsibility for our own emotions, our own fulfillment, our own well-being and our own decisions and actions. All right. And so all that does is, um, you know, when we're over responsible for other people's emotions, we become simultaneously under responsible for our own emotions. And this is that whole cycle of what I want to talk about with you guys today around guilt. And so how you can uh, work out and recognize and be able to decipher between what's actually healthy guilt, right? And what's actually very unhealthy guilt. All right. And because the reason why is because we take a meta perspective on what we want in our relationship dynamics. We look, we take ourselves out of it and we look at, okay, if I continue to play this game that's going on right now, is that the kind of result that I'm wanting to continue continuously generate? Or if I take myself out of that, what could be a different result? Where is that pattern going? And what would a different change in the pattern uh, create for me, right? It's about taking ourselves out of it, taking a bigger perspective so that we can actually know that we're moving ourselves in a healthy, fulfilled direction rather than creating a dynamic that is um, very unhealthy and very defeating and deflating to the individuals partaking in it. All right, so that's the whole reason why we're doing this. So let me tell you about these two varieties of guilt, all right? And again, drop me some comments below as I talk through this. I can't wait to check in with you guys. And just let me know, are you seeing yourself in some of this? Uh, do you know other people in your family that engage in these or, you know, your friends, whoever it is? And, uh, you know, see how you can build some perspective to apply to your own life. And I'd love to hear from you guys. So the two varieties of guilt are healthy guilt, Unhealthy guilt, pretty simple, but let's unpack what they are. So healthy guilt is actually the kind of guilt that we experience when we have this kind of realization and, um, and kind of regret that we did something or we didn't do something um, that wasn't actually healthy, right? And also what we didn't, we deem to be, you know, um, bad instead of good based on our vision for ourselves as to the quality of human being we choose to be, right? We fell out of alignment with the type, type of person that we want to be and we choose to be, that we'd be proud to be. And, you know, and we have this feedback mechanism to awaken us to something that was not in alignment with moving us in that proud direction, right? And so that's actually healthy guilt. We're meant to experience guilt as a feedback mechanism to alert us as to whether our actions or inactions are in alignment with the type of person that we choose to be or not, right? Now, that is going to be very healthy for us to have. You know, we don't have to just have positive emotions all of the time in order to realize uh, and give us feedback that we're on the right path. Also, there are some of the more deemed negative emotions, right? Or the darker, more unpleasant emotions are basically hugely valuable to give us that necessary feedback to realign with the type of person that we'd be proud to be. And we all innately know, you know, when we're in or out of an alignment with that. So that's healthy guilt. Now on the flip side of that, we want to look at what's unhealthy guilt. Now unhealthy guilt is the kind that we experience when we ultimately care more about what others think about us than we think about ourselves, all right? And we end up regretting the actions or inactions that we take um, that were maybe even healthy for us to choose for ourselves, but they conflicted with something that somebody else uh, expected or wanted, particularly those the closest um, to us, all right? So what happens is, you know, unhealthy guilt, that version of guilt that we experience is ultimately um, from a very wounded place within ourselves. We're ultimately telling ourselves a lie, right? That what we did that may have been healthy for ourselves, um, what, because it conflicted with somebody else's uh, wants or expectations, now we're lying to ourselves and telling ourselves that, oh, it's our responsibility. We must have done something wrong, even though we didn't have any bad intentions. It had this response from this person close to me. 
me. Now they're angry at me. So that must mean I did something wrong. So I'm going to take that blame. They're blaming me. I'm blaming myself. And, um, and now I feel guilty, right? Now that is you lying to yourself because, um, because what you're doing is you're saying you're, it's your responsibility for how somebody else responds to something that might be healthy for you to choose for yourself. And you didn't have any bad intentions to hurt them. Right. And so, um, what happens is it's coming from this very wounded part of ourselves. So if we experience and find ourselves experiencing unhealthy guilt, what we can do is just use it as a mirror to realize, ah, oh, there's a part of me that's pretty wounded inside. And that wounded self actually believes um, that it's their responsibility or my responsibility to manage the feelings of others and control others' perceptions of me, all right? So that's going to come from a very wounded place. Now, healthy guilt on the flip side of that is going to be experienced by the healing self or the healed self, right? So we're going to have unhealthy guilt coming from a very wounded self. We're going to have healthy guilt coming from a healing self or a part of us that has already been healed. All right. And that healing self recognizes when they've fallen out of alignment with the quality of person that they would be most proud to be. All right, they've gone against their own set of standards and values that are super healthy and uh, for, the, for themselves as an individual and directing themselves to a vision of uh, the quality of person that they're definitely going to be um, proud of being in their lifetime. All right, so like I said, you know, that unhealthy guilt comes from you just telling yourself a lie, right? When that wounded, programmed, kind of critical part of you just kind of takes over and tells you that what you want um, that has no bad intention to harm anybody else, right, is actually wrong. Um, and that, um, that that is when you will feel that kind of unhealthy guilt. And this critical part within you coming from that wounded place really wants to control how others feel about you. All right. And so it tells you that lie that you're responsible for other people's feelings. OK, so I really this I know this is um, it's it's not always easy to get this stuff, particularly when we're somebody who struggles with guilt. And believe me, like guilt has been one of the biggest struggles for me that I've really had to work on and really have to learn how to decipher what's actually unhealthy guilt and what's healthy guilt. Right. And, I, you know, when we're living to the expectations of others, when we're disconnected from the voice within, when we're not getting clarity of vision over the pers quality of person that we hold the standard of for ourselves to be so we can be fulfilled and proud of ourselves and a really healthy place, then we can easily succumb to that unhealthy uh, quality of guilt and that uh, that coming from that wounded nature. Now, don't beat yourself up if you find yourself succumbing to this unhealthy guilt and you're taking you're being overly responsible for other people's emotions. And if they're upset by anything that you do or don't do, um, even if it's healthy for you, right? Uh, especially when it's healthy for you, then uh, you know you really need to see that this is a wake up call for you, right? It in of, in and of itself is a, as a feedback me mechanism, a very positive feedback mechanism to go, ah, oh, I'm a little bit wounded, right? I'm a little bit disconnected from self. I seem to be overvaluing other people's perceptions of me rather than be uh, really connected and proud of who I am and know why I'm choosing what I'm choosing to do. And I take a meta perspective, right? I'm not just in this dynamic. I'm taking a meta perspective. I'm looking at how where this pattern is going. And I know full well that it is not selfish for me to do things that are truly and deeply healthy for me, even if they upset the people closest to me. And those um, who are really care about who I am and I care about who they are and we're meant to be in each other's lives for the long term, they're ultimately going to, um, you know, they're going to want what's healthiest for me. So even if they cannot see it in this very moment, even if they are overwhelmed by anger, frustration, sadness, you know, want to blame me. Even if all of those human emotions and experiences that they're having occur, it's not my responsibility 
my responsibility is to always align with what is healthiest, most self-loving for myself and know full well that if I take a long-term perspective, I know even if it's uncomfortable in this um, short-term moment, I know that it's going to be best for them if there's somebody who loves me and I'm going to be the healthiest version of myself that I can be and I'm therefore going to treat them in the most loving possible, generous, overflowing way that, um, that I ever could, right? As opposed to being an unhealthy version of myself who's terrified about what everybody thinks of me, who's lost connection to myself. And now my supposed love in this connection is not a love at all. It's a needy grab for fulfillment that I'm not giving to myself. All right. So you need to rewrite the program and the story inside uh, for all of you guys like myself as well, who've succumbed to that very unhealthy version of guilt. And, and don't just throw out guilt, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Guilt is very healthy. Just be able to decipher what's unhealthy and what's healthy, right? Remember, unhealthy guilt is connected to what other people are going to think about this or think about me, right? Even if I'm making a choice, and especially if I'm making a choice that is very healthy for me, and healthy guilt is what we experience uh, toward ourself, right? When we realize, ah, oh, I'm not in alignment with the person that I, the quality of human being I choose to be and that I will be proud of. And that's a valuable feedback mechanism to, to alert us to where we're off path. And we don't stay stuck there. We go, yep, got the feedback. Doesn't feel great. But now what do I do as a result? How do I learn from this? How do I spiral up from this, right? How do I grow? How do, how do I build more and more deeper connections? connection with myself, more trust with myself, because I'm able to take that responsibility. I'm able to own my um, my um, mistakes and I'm able to make adjustments so that my future self doesn't repeat the same old patterns. All right. Now, this is super, super valuable for each of us to get. And remember, you train others how to treat you. All right. So, this is really difficult when you start playing the, um, you know, going in the direction and building the momentum to really empower yourself and become your most healthy, fulfilled self and remove the unhealthy guilt traps from your life and, you know, and then utilize the power of healthy guilt, right? Um, what you need to do, one of the biggest challenges, particularly for the people who've been with you in your life for a long period of time they may have gotten used to blaming you for their disempowering emotional states. And, and you've gone along with that game, right? Like you've blamed yourself, you've taken on the responsibility. Now you've got like a bit of a challenging journey to rewrite the program, rewrite the dynamic. And so remember, you train others how to treat you. If you've been training them to treat you in a way where they feel um, validated to be able to just blame you for their unemo their unintelligent emotional states, right? Um, then you've got to retrain them how to treat you. And I'm telling you, I know it's not easy, but it is so rewarding and it is the only pathway forward should you want loving connections in your life, right? That are very, very healthy for the two of you, right? And so what you need to do at this stage is um, to not sacrifice your truth for them, right? Um, and realize that that's their responsibility. Your responsibility is to fulfill yourself. Your responsibility is to have courage to do and align with the healthiest version of you you can be in every given moment and not take on the burden of responsibility for other people's responses to what's healthy for you. Now, it doesn't mean that you um, get all self-righteous, right? And nasty with other people, right? About, oh, no, that, you can't do that to me and you make me unhealthily guilty guilty or whatever, it's actually getting yourself to a place where you can have compassion for their emotion, but it doesn't make you change what's healthy for you, right? And you might have to go on a journey like I've done with a few different relationships in my life that I've had to retrain, right? Um, basically, I've had to have that compassion, but then stay strong and solid in um, my own internal convictions and, um, and also just keep, keep stating that, 
right? Keep showing that you are actually valuing the relationship. It's not you against them. You're actually, again, taking that meta perspective. Like I keep saying this because I want you to really get this in your bones, right? To know that when you take a larger perspective, when you get outside of yourself and you get outside of just them and you look at the dynamic and you look at the projection of the future where that dynamic is going to go, you're making decisions based on the third entity of that relationship, right? What's healthiest for that? And that's always going to be um, stemming from what's healthiest from the individuals um, partaking in that dynamic, all right? And so remind them of that because that's what builds trust. Because when we are stuck in me against you dynamics, there is no trust. It's a battle, right? And you're on the battlefield and it's a give and take and it's a power struggle. And I don't know about you, but I am not at all interested in that as a quality of relationship that I'm going to partake in. I don't want a power struggle. I want um, a relationship, a quality of love and connection that is between equals and also, you know, supports each other's greatness. It supports and encourages each other's health and fulfillment and energy and vibrance and all the great stuff, right? And sometimes that means that that other person that you're in relationship with isn't going to do all the things that you might want them to do, right? And you need to have your own connection with self and your own health and fulfillment of your own needs so that you can hold the space for that other individual to do whatever is healthiest for them, all right? Without making it mean something personal about you, without trying to control them, all right? And when you are making things mean something very personal and you are trying to control, again, don't beat up on yourself. Just realize, okay, I got a little work to do here because that's not the quality of dynamic I want to create, all right? So this is all about building self-awareness so that we can ultimately consciously transform the dynamics that we have at play so that we can create the kind of future and experience the present in the ways that will, will be ultimately most fulfilling and healthy for everybody involved. So I hope that that is a value to you guys. I hope that this is just a really good reminder for you, particularly for those of you who do succumb to unhealthy guilt, to don't let anyone guilt you into neglecting yourself. And you need to know yourself. You need to be connected to yourself. You need to have a vision for who you choose to be that you'd be really proud of yourself for, that's super healthy for you and the people around you in order to know when you're neglecting yourself. So don't stay blind to all of that information either, right? It takes work, but it's always going to be worth it. All right. So that's my message. I can't wait to check in with you guys in the comments. So make sure that you're dropping me a comment. Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. Have you got any questions or comments or words of wisdom? And if this um, message has been of value, please do share it um, with any of your loved ones. Um, that's such a great gift that you can give to myself and hopefully those other people if you're finding it valuable. All right, so let's say hi. I've got Chris in the house. Hello to you and Edgar. Sending love from Chihuahua, Mexico as per usual. Much love right back at you, my friend. And Erwin's here as well. And Haru, great to have you back. Shine on, Divine One. Much love and gratitude to you and right back at you. Awesome. And Shah, good to have you. And Luke, great advice, Vanessa. So nice to see you. You look lovely as ever. Thank you so much, Luke. Always grateful to have you join live, my friend. Hope you're doing amazingly well. And Maria's here and Ram and Tim. Hey to you, Ram. Always good to see you. And Tomican and uh, Melkor. Good morning from Manila in the Philippines. Awesome. Love having you here as well as usual. And Charles is here and Jamantis. Hello. Howdy to you. And uh, Ezra is here and Brandon. Hey to you, my friend. And uh, Kelsey speaking to me. So grateful that this message is resonating to you, beautiful soul. And uh, Jerry's in the house and Gulshan and Kelsey. Thank you. You are so welcome. And uh, you needed this so bad. Oh, I'm so, so grateful that this message hit you when you needed it. And uh, yeah, I mean... This is a message, you know, I actually started writing for myself. So I think you guys who've been following me for a while now, you know that 
My messages are actually me doing my own personal development work and whatever's coming up for me and most at top of mind at the time. And then I create this content for you in the hope that because it resonates with me and my own humanness, it'll resonate with yours. So I'm grateful to hear that, Kelsey. Thank you so much for letting me know. And uh, Stephen's here as well. And Kelsey, yes, yes, yes. I love it. And uh, Jerry, hey, Vanessa, fell asleep after the football game. I get it that we have to take um, care of ourselves first so that we can share our purest self. A happy you is contagious. So beautifully put, my friend. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, we've all heard the kind of corny line it's become kind of right now, you know, to put on your oxygen mask first or whatever. But it's so true, right? Like, uh, and I say this in particular, like Jerry's bringing up, right? Because uh, those of us who succumb to unhealthy guilt tend to be people who are very conscious of how people around them are feeling, right? You, you really want them to be happy. You really want them to feel loved, all these sorts of things. Um, but if you don't if you're not the healthiest version of yourself that you can be, if you're not the most healthiest um, or fulfilled that you can be, then basically what happens is what you perceive to be you giving love is actually a giving to get. And you're not truly generously loving. You're trying to mold and control the perceptions of others that they have of, on you because you're relying on them to fulfill you, right? So it's a very give and get transactional dynamic that you create when you don't take responsibility for yourself and you just have to be up willing to be the leader um, in taking this responsibility and it's gonna create some friction but just know that if your long-term game is the fulfillment and love and you know all the great stuff that you want to experience for yourself and you want the people that you love most to experience then you have to be willing to go on this journey all right because the op the other alternative is not leading anybody in a healthy direction all right and you're getting into that transactional state rather than a generous loving deeply fulfilling connection all right so love that jerry and Candace is here as well. Good to see you, beautiful. And uh, Edgar, um, this is so related with healthy boundaries because you might feel guilty for not fulfilling external expectations and keep your alignment and uh, be true to yourself. Absolutely. And um, I think my message that I did a couple of days ago for you guys is really in alignment with what you've just stated there, Edgar. I love it. And I so appreciate your words of wisdom shared here. You know, you've got to know where you end and another person begins. All right, go back and have a look at my latest post that I put out a couple of days ago and my latest Facebook Live previous to this one. And basically, if you're finding yourself in those codependent kind of dynamics, that's what I'm talking about with the unhealthy guilt, right? It's all very codependent. We want to get you into that independence of knowing who you are, being deeply connected to that, having that vision of the quality of person that you would be truly proud to be and fully aligning with that, right, on a daily basis with all your decisions and actions that's in that independent stage and then we ultimately want to get you to interdependence where you can have compassion right for somebody else's experience but you're not taking it on board as your own you're not over responsible for them and being simultaneously under responsible for your own health and well-being all right so absolutely Thank you so much for sharing that, Edgar. So appreciate your contributions. And uh, Alistair is here and Karen and Ange and clapping. I love it, Kelsey. Grateful um, to have you here today. And Scott's here and Nakwon and uh, Jason. Wow, Vanessa. Oh, beauty and brains. Thank you. Um, you are gorgeous and brilliant. You. Sh oh, all right. I appreciate your kind words there, um, Jason. Jason? Um, I love the spelling. It's different. And I'm grateful to have you here. And I'm so grateful for your kind words and uh, contributing to our conversation today. Thank you. And uh, much love to you, Naquin. And uh, Abdul's here. And Minaj, hello to you, my friend. Grateful that there's something great in today's message for you. And Bill's joined us. Amazing to see you as usual. And Aoni is here as well. So I'm just about to wrap up. So I hope that you guys who are just catching the recording um, right now, oh, no, I hope that you're, who's here live, 
catch the recording, get a ton of value from today's um, message of what you didn't hear. Much love to you, Bill. And uh, remember, you know, um, that don't let anyone guilt you into neglecting yourself. And uh, Nikon, what's your star sign? I am a Gemini, born on the 15th of June. So I um, hope that gives you what you wanted. So that's my message for each and every one of you guys. Remember, those of us who succumb so easily to that style of unhealthy guilt, we want to be able to decipher what's unhealthy, what is healthy. And remember that when you're in alignment with making decisions that you know to be in alignment with what's healthiest for you, in, in alignment with the vision for the quality of person that you choose to be, that you would be proud to be, right? That's very healthy for you. Then, you know, that you can't feel guilt for other people's responses to that. All right, you can have compassion for them, but know where you end and they begin. You can have compassion. Don't let it change what you have internal conviction about being healthy within yourself around, all right? And know that healthy guilt is just that alert, that positive feedback mechanism for ourselves to alert us when we've fallen off path for the quality of person that we'd be proud to be, all right? And just don't beat yourself up, get back on track, use it as a feedback mechanism, not a way to punish yourself, right? And I say that because a lot of us who succumb to unhealthy guilt will blame ourselves and punish ourselves um, harshly, become our own worst critics, right? So hope this has been helpful to you and hello to you AJ um, so that is my message um, please do share it as I said if this has been of value or you know any beautiful souls out there who do struggle with guilt and you want to help and support them and give them the gift of uh, self-awareness and the ability to transform and create fulfillment in their lives then yeah please do share it all right and um, as usual um, Minaj you are so welcome thank you I'm grateful that this was a value and and as usual, my message to each and every one of you to leave you with is to go out there and honor your authenticity, to deepen your intimacy and go out there and contribute meaningfully and purposefully. All right. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys very shortly. <clears throat> Tomorrow, I have a post that goes a little deeper into what we discussed today. <clears throat> So it'll be a good reminder and uh, I hope it's a value to you and I cannot wait to see you guys soon. And thanks to everybody uh, for joining me live today. You are so appreciated. Much love.